I think preserving history, you don't know where you're going unless you've seen where you've come from, I think. I think it's just important to know what's come before you so you don't make some of the same mistakes, maybe, but also just to be able to forge ahead. I think history is really important for that. I believe that Saturton and Telford working together is the best part of the community. We're two, two towns and the people that are living and working in Telford and living and working in Souderton continuously are committed to better the community. If you're looking for small town charm but with potential to build a business or even build life in a nice community, this is perfect. It's a great place to raise a family, the schools are excellent, um, people put a lot of pride into their work and what they do. When I try to explain to people why Telford and Souderton are so special, it really is about the people, it's about the community, it's about their connection to the history, it's about supporting each other, um, businesses that open here, people who live here will support them, people will come and shop and eat there and you'll see the same faces every week. The question of why Telford and Souderton is a very interesting one in that I think it brings people together. They want to preserve the heritage, they want to preserve the history, but they also want to have those amenities that people today wish to have, and that is a nice coffee shop to go to, or a nice restaurant to visit, or a nice clothing store to have, and not have to go to the big suburban mall. Um, that small town, hometown feel is still the quality of life and the reason why people are going to continue to come to Telford and Souderton. Telford and Souderton, uh, just for me, represent um, a way of life that had been, it's been a really fun thing for me to research and find out about the people and, and the buildings and what happened and it just, it kind of to me is probably all of, of USA then. You learn about Souderton and Telford, you can probably learn about the whole rest of the United States. So Souderton and Telford, both are historic communities living in current times. Um, they have businesses, they have their homes in these historic places. It does have such a strong history and such a strong future that I can't imagine why you wouldn't want to be in Souderton and Telford. Souderton started, it's really kind of cool, there were no major roads anywhere near Souderton. So every other town has like, you know, something major going through it. It was just farmland. And by the 1850s, it was still just farmland. And then Henry O. Souder heard that the railroad was coming through. And it was only going to touch a little bit of Franconia Township. To get his lumber here from elsewhere in Pennsylvania and up and down the East Coast, he had to use ox carts, basically. Um, on unpaved roads and only in warm weather. The whole reason he wanted to have the train here is because he had, he was a farmer, but he also had a lumber mill. And what he had to do was float the logs down the Delaware River until they got to Point Pleasant. And so he donated his land to the train station, to the train company, so that they would go through Souderton. So when you look at the railroad maps, it's really cool, it goes up, goes all around and then back up again. You would have seen that. It would have just gone straight. Then, once his business was booming, the community decided to break off of Franconia Township in 1887 and form their own borough of Souderton. So Henry O. Souder became the father of Souderton and he is noted as our founder. So he started a general store. He had a coal yard. He had the lumber mill. He had a hardware store. And then, right directly across the tracks, and this is the part I think that makes Souderton more what it is, is the railroad came for about a block and a half. It went right down the middle of two men's properties, Henry O. Souder and Jonathan Huntsberger. Jonathan also had all these sons. 
And so right, just a one block area, they also had on their side, the Huntsburgers, had a general store and a hardware store. And so they just, the town formed like practically overnight. One of his kids, Ellis Souter, started J.M. Landis and Company, which at the time was the largest department store between Allentown and Philadelphia. Uh, it's the building I currently work in, but prior to Union National Bank taking it over, it was Ellis's, my great-great-grandfather. It changed hands to my great-grandfather, then to my grandfather, uh, and then the bank bought it, and my father worked there, and now I work there. So I'm the fifth generation to work in that building, and the eighth generation to live in Souderton. Telford was actually formed prior to Souderton. It was incorporated in 1886, and I think there was already a tiny town there, probably before the railroad came through. In, the railroad was finished here in Souderton in like 1857. Telford was formed around the train station, and in doing so in, in, those, in that time period, it was a lumber yard, a coal yard, and a stockade yard where people could buy their goods and services or ship their animals to market. So just like a lot of little towns anywhere, you would have formed something along a major route. So there were um, blacksmiths, shops, and there were other little stores and all. And then the, the train came through from Souderton and into Telford. A large fire happened in the center of Telford. What it did is it wiped out the, the stockade yard and the coal yard uh, in the center of the town. And that transformed the stop from an agricultural time to an industrial time. And that's when the train station was built and the freight house was built, still allowing goods and services to, to come in and out on the railroad. And it also uh, created an opportunity for passengers at that time. Another interesting thing about Telford is that it, it's on the Bucks County side and the Montgomery County side. So when it was first incorporated, they, it was against the law to actually have one town on two counties, in two counties. So they had Telford and West Telford. Half of it is located in Montgomery County, the other half is located in Bucks County. There are only a handful of communities in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that are like that, and we happen to be one of those. I think that the reason it's the Twin Towns is just because they were so close together. Because right outside, there wasn't anything. Then you had farmland again. So the two towns had formed really close to each other. And then there was a, a little, um, it was called the Telford Tripper. And it was just a little trolley that only went between Souderton and Telford. So you had the regular trolley that went all over the place. And then this little one that went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I think people, again, like I said, it was kind of, they would go out, you know, the country was Telford, and then you come into Souderton, the big city. People came and shopped for miles around. It was nuts. It was absolutely crazy. Plus, there was a swimming pool that was a, it had started off as a quarry, and then they just kind of dredged it a little bit and made a lake. It was a Souderton lake. And people would come on the train, and they would come by trolley, and they would go to this lake and swim. It had a diving board. It had, it's right where the pool is today. In the early 1900s and up through the late 60s and early 70s, Souderton was a booming town. Now it seems like a sleepy little community, but at one time Souderton was booming. We're an hour from where the nation was born, so a lot of the people that, that moved here from the very beginning, there is a lot of rich history and I think a lot of people even moving into the area are drawn to that um, and again it's it's a point of pride of not just what happened hundreds of years ago but how we continue to cultivate um, just a sense of, of place. That history is going to actually drive the revitalization. I think that Southerton's right on the edge of becoming the next small town to be a really fun, interesting, unique place to live, work, and, and come enjoy. The idea of revitalization 
uh, came about in the uh, early 2000 time frame. Um, and we recognized that we couldn't um, do it alone. The cost to begin implementing a program like that is too burdensome for a small town of less than 5,000 people. So what we did is we uh, partnered with our, our neighbors in Souderton to come up with a program where it could be a cost-sharing mechanism of trying to bring back commercial economic revitalization to our two communities. And that's how it got started. I think the collaboration is really going to be kind of neat because first off, half the time you don't know if you're in Souderton or Telford. It's not like a straight line. It's kind of jagged where everything goes. And it's always been sort of a Souderton Telford thing. Souderton Telford. It's a unique relationship because we are two independent boroughs. We have two borough councils, two fire departments, two police departments. We're about to finish the train station, which is a historically significant building. Behind that is a freight building that is also part of the train station that we're about to re renovate. There's a building across the street uh, that used to be a that used to be West Freed's garage, a big, white, beautiful building that fell into disrepair but is now getting renovated and there'll be a coffee shop in the first floor. We're a town that's just right on that cusp now of reaching our potential. You know, we have a whole lot of construction going on right now. We've got a whole lot of reinvestment going on right now. And it's a great place to, you know, grow your business and have a place where your workers are going to be comfortable and feel safe and want to bring their families to live here. I think Souderton or Telford is ideal for someone looking to open up a business uh, because, first of all, both towns are walkable. And in the cases of both towns, their retail areas are quite condensed. So it's not as though you'd be just, you know, in some building on your own somewhere. Um, it's, it's conceivable that right now I can get my hair cut, go next door and grab lunch, go another door down, do a little shopping for clothing, oh, and pick up tickets to a show. And that's just in one block on Souderton. When you look at the uh, progress of a town, like I said, for me when I first started, the main streets was looking kind of rough and you see the asset improvement that happened, the enhancements for the streetscape in Souderton with cobblestones and lighting and flowers on the light poles and stuff. That makes a really big difference to your perception of a town as you come through. And in Telford, the train station, because it was so dilapidated. The important part of the revitalization process for our downtown had to have a, a, a momentum started by creating a bricks and mortar project for people to see in order to buy into the community concept of revitalization. Uh, that bricks and mortar is renovating those abandoned buildings. That's paving the parking lot. That's creating a space. That really made a difference to your whole perception of that area when you see a clean, beautifully renovated train station where they have community events like the farmer's market. Uh, India Valley Farmers Market, uh, which is a tenant in our parking lot area directly across from Main Street along the railroad tracks, uh, was formed in May of 2002. When you walk into the Farmers Market, you're always greeted with a smile. The bakers, the winemakers, all gather in a community place where the uh, community gets to come out and it's enjoyable. The, the children, they look forward to the farmer's market more than their parents. They're dragging their parents down through the parking lot. The Indian Valley Farmer's Market is unique in that you feel welcomed right away. Because the first thing you encounter when you enter is the Souderton Telford Main Street's table. So all of the Main Street's volunteers are there. You have the craft of the week that is sponsored by a local business. Um, there's live music. You can grab a bottle of wine from the vineyard that is literally in Telford. Grab bread that you know was just baked three blocks over. The farmer's market in Telford is really great because it supports our local farmers. Some of them are heritage farmers. The farm has been handed down from generation to generation. Our, our farmer's market is set up so that it can become like a Saturday tradition for families. Kids come in and do a craft. Parents have a chance to shop. Sometimes kids do the craft with us as the parents wander, and they feel perfectly safe doing that. There's a, a very uh, long history of 
German, Pennsylvania Dutch settlers here in southeast Pen eastern Pennsylvania that have all kinds of unique and creative foods that are available uh, at our farmers market. Things like shoe fly pie and funny cake and chow chow, items that just aren't common to people outside of the Amish, the Mennonite, and the, uh, the, the farming community here in, in southeast Pennsylvania. Right now we have a new bakery that came in that's doing the traditional funny cakes, which was also something I had never heard of until I came up here. And it's cool because you also, the shopping center, the Landis supermarket, carries some of those same old recipes. You don't find them half an hour down the road in Warminster. You, you will never hear a funny cake in Warminster. <laughs> Where I came from, you're not going to get it in Philly, but you will get it here. I think uh, one of Main Street's greatest accomplishments of late has been the Art Jam. I mean, that has been a huge undertaking that requires most, if not all, of the volunteer power. Um, and it's a really unique event. It brings true artisans, a great day of music, and a beautiful Satterton Park. And it really makes a great use of space. And it, it also helps solidify really what the Souderton downtown is more so becoming, which is um, almost an artisan destination. We've got Clay Rat, we've got Harry Boardman's studio coming in. The art jam is just fun. It is. We have around 50, we might hit 60 or 70 this year, artists. There's music all day. The really fun part is there's a couple of the bands that have been here a few years and we're watching them grow too. There's food for everybody. There's a beer and a wine tasting in the park. I think the Art Jam has helped in that it's not that we're closed-minded, but sometimes you have to see something in the space to really realize, oh, yeah, why wouldn't we have this here? So by bringing the Art Jam in with different artists, different musicians, different even food offerings, it does broaden all of our horizons. People walking in to the Art Jam can expect one-of-a-kind, handmade, crafted items, musicians, as well as the beer and wine tasting tent. And it is a day that is filled with unbelievable conversation, the excitement's in the air, and you can feel it. The goal for Main Street is easily explained in just having a thriving town, having a place where they enjoy where they live and they're connected to their community. So, you know, like 10 years from now, I want to see a town where people are on the street every day. I believe there are many changes throughout the, the many years that I've seen and they're positive. The growth, the revitalization, the Telfer train station, the Satterton train station, the buildings that have been brought back to life. What I hope for our revitalization in the next five to 10 years, I, right now all I see is potential. And it's exciting. And you know, it's, it's like, yes, we can have nice things here, why not? There is room and potential for so many different businesses to come in and thrive. And I think there's definitely a lot of energy and passion in that direction. Um, and I think if we continue to be purposeful, we'll get there. When we first moved into this area 25 years ago, I purchased this card at the local little shop for a good friend of ours. And it's, it was a picture of, here's Telford at night. And when you opened the card up, it was completely black. Now that was 25 years ago. Times have changed since then, but the people and the values have not. So I do ask myself, why Telford and Satterton? And my husband and I discuss it quite often. But it is the community. It's walking distance, small shops, the people. They all make the community. I think the, the story needs to be told about areas like this because it's small town USA and I don't think, I think people who live here their whole lives are used to it. So they're used to just the everyday, how their grandparents lived, how, you know, what they've heard of their great grandparents. It doesn't kind of mean anything to them on that level. But on a deeper level, there's a pride. There's just um, a love and a pride of the area that I think is, is really, it's really fun and fascinating.